I'm Tom Parg from Berry Consultants. In this video, I'm going to show you an example of using FAX to design and simulate a phase one dose escalation trial using the FAX NCRM module. So here we are, I've just opened FAX and this is the standard FAX start screen. We have down here on the left hand side uh, the list of different types of design that we can start designing and simulating in FAX. The one we're going to look at today is a dose escalation design, it's the NCRM. So if we double click on that, FAX will switch to showing me the appropriate parameter tabs uh, for doing this kind of design. You can see across the top of the tabs we have a study tab where we input the, the main framework or structure of the study we want to do. We have the virtual subject response tab where we set up the scenarios we wish to simulate. And then we get to the design tab where we as trial designers begin to have our fun and create uh, the design uh, that we want to simulate in this trial. And then finally we get to the simulation tab and we'll actually run some simulations and see how well our design has done. So in this dose escalation trial, um, we're going to st start by just setting up the doses that are available for us to escalate through. So we're going to have eight. Uh, and I'm going to actually name these. So let's say our lowest dose is a 500 milligram. Then we have 750 milligram uh, and so on in 250 milligram steps. Now what I'm typing in here uh, are just names. These don't actually have any effect on the behavior of the, the program, uh, but they allow us to kind of meaningfully interact with the results. And then on this side, we can say what actual dose strength we want that to correspond to. So you know, do we want our doses linearly spaced or exponentially spaced or logarithmically spaced? And here we're just going to set in a, um, the dose strength in terms of uh, how many hundred mils uh, are in the, the dose. So the first dose is going to be strength 5, then 7.5, and so on. So this is obviously a, one of the most fundamental aspects of a dose escalation study. What are the doses? And so we come in now here and you know, how many subjects are we going to be able to put through this trial? Uh, so let's say uh, in order to cover uh, that many doses, uh, we're going to allow ourselves at least 11 cohorts. And we're going to go for a cohort size of four. So we're going to try and learn quite a lot about each, uh, each dose uh, with each cohort just so that the simulations can let us know how long this trial we can expect this trial to take, we'll say it's going to take us 12 weeks to recruit and observe each, each of these cohorts. Some of these other options here we have on the tab uh, we're not going to be using in this example. And then on the toxicity tab, we say, well, how are we going to judge toxicity? What's an acceptable level? What's an unacceptable level? Um, we're going to target this toxicity interval design, which we set up over here. So we here we describe the, the boundaries, so we say our target mound is a toxicity between 15 and 30 percent. Less than 15 percent we'll say is underdosing. We would, if we end up on that dose, we'd really rather we ended up with a higher dose. But if we end up on the other side of the target band, then we're into an area where there's excess toxicity. Uh, and if we go above even 60 percent, then that's completely unacceptable. And this allows us to specify what we call overdose control rules so that we can specify that if at any point from our model the posterior probability that the toxicity of a particular dose lies, in this case, above the toxicity band, so in the combination of the excess and unacceptable toxicity, if that exceeds 50%, uh, then we don't want that dose to be allocated to during the trial at that point. We're also going to use a thing called a small cohort run-in, so our cohort uh, size of four is quite large, and perhaps we don't want to start uh, on the very lowest dose where we don't expect toxicity with so many subjects. So we're going to start with smaller cohorts of two, and we'll escalate a dose level at, at a time with just the two subjects until we see our first toxicity. But we don't want that to go too far, uh, so we'll put a limit on that of the 1500 milligram dose. If we manage to get all the way up to 1500 milligrams with this small cohort running, at that point we're going to be a little more cautious 
and we're going to start to use the, the larger cohorts. Now these smaller cohorts will count towards our overall maximum number of subjects. And also when the run-in ends, typically because we see a toxicity, then what we want to do is to expand that two patients to the large cohort size of four patients. So that set up our, the basic uh, structure of the trial in terms of uh, number of doses, um, our targets, and our uh, number of subjects and our cohort sizes. What we're now going to do is specify some of the scenarios that we're going to simulate to see how well the design we come up with uh, is, a, is able to perform in terms of escalating to and then stopping at uh, the desired dose. So we're going to create, uh, for brevity here, I'm just going to create three scenarios. Uh, typically when we're doing this kind of design, you'd, you'd have a lot more than that, maybe eight or ten. Uh, and I'm just going to label them so that I give myself a clue as to where uh, I want the design to end up. So in this first example, I'm going to call it MTD3. The maximum tolerated dose uh, is going to be dose three. And that's so when I then look at my design results, I'm hoping it's, it's finding dose three. And to do that, I'm setting up the toxicity rates I want to simulate at the different doses. So we'll, we'll have low toxicity to start with, but rising quite quickly so that at the third dose we're in the target band and then by the fourth dose we're outside the target band and the toxicity is of course continuing to rise as the doses get stronger. We'll then create a next profile where the MTD is a little bit later. We'll go straight to dose five here, although obviously we might have uh, one which dose four is the MTD as well. Uh, and in this case, the initial toxicity, of course, is going to start out a bit lower and rise a little more slowly until we get close to dose five. And then again, toxicity continues to rise, so the dose is above, uh, beyond our target toxicity band. And then lastly for now, uh, I'll create one uh, with an MTD of seven. And again, we'll have an even slower initial toxicity, an even slower rise in toxicity, so we can get to all the way to the seventh dose before uh, we start to see appreciable amount. Now, because of the limits of the screen resolution here, uh, what you can't see is at the, the bottom of the screen for each of these uh, faxes showing you the graph of the profile we've just, the toxicity profile we've just put in. So you can check that the profile uh, in, has indeed looks like uh, what you're intending to enter and you haven't made any mistakes. So we'll just check that. That was MTD7. This is with the MTD5, five, dose 5, and here's the first one with the MTD3. So you can see we've put in three quite different scenarios. So you know our design is going to have to be pretty flexible in order to perform well uh, in all those settings. So we now come to the design tab where we enter the, the rules of the game, how we're going to allow this uh, escalation study to proceed, how we're going to estimate what the toxicity is from the results we've seen uh, from the cohorts we've observed already. And this design is spread out over five sub-tabs. And so looking at each of those in turn, the first thing we do, we want to map the strengths of our doses onto how we're modeling the toxicity response. And as the doses here I've entered uh, are sort of linearly spaced, then we want a linear transformation of those dose levels to our effective dose strengths, the things we call the X hats. The other thing we can do is set where we want the reference doses where we have an effective dose strength of zero. And I'm going to set that indeed at zero. And then having set up how we want to scale our doses, we now get to specify the Bayesian logistic regression model uh, which we're going to fit to the observed toxicity. And the principal thing we specify here is the bivariate normal prior that we have on the alpha and beta uh, parameters of the Bayesian logistic regression, the formula for which you can see here. Now in this instance, as we have moved the reference dose to before our doses, our expectation of toxicity uh, at the reference dose is very low, so the mean, our expected mean for alpha uh, is small, but we'll give it a, a reasonable standard deviation. So it can be quite variable. And we're going to set our slope 
to vary around a mean of minus 1.5 with a standard deviation of 1.5. And what FACS is doing down here is taking 100, 100 samples from this prior distribution, plugging those in as parameters to the curve and showing us the curve so we can see what the shape of this prior space looks like uh, in terms of our, uh, our logistic regression model. We have an option we're not going to use, but we can. what we can do, one, one way of setting the prior up is to set a very non-informative prior for the toxicity response and then enter small amounts of prior, what we call pseudo-subject data. So you can say, like, it, our expectation is the equivalent of having seen, say, a subject on the lowest dose with no toxicity and maybe half a subject with half a toxicity on the highest dose. But we're not going to use that in this example. Now we can further control the design by setting up the rules for escalation. So we're going to use a combination of the overdose control, which we set up on the toxicity tab, and these additional rules. So the first is that the starting dose is going to be the lowest dose at 500 milligrams. What we're going to do is define rules in terms of the dose levels, and we're going to say that we want one full cohort on a dose before we're allowed to escalate. And when we do, you're allowed to escalate by a single dose step. And we've got other options here that we're not going to look at for changing that spacing or having the, the spacing change depending on the where we are in the dose levels or how many toxicities we've, we've observed. And here on the, the graph, we can see what the escalation would be if there were no toxicities observed. So we can see the, the red dots here showing our small cohort run in and then the full cohorts again, uh, if they'd started out at the base, how they would proceed. So you can see where basically testing one cohort at a time, uh, escalating one dose level at a time. Then lastly, we can set up the stopping criteria, which says, I want at least two of my full cohorts, eight patients tested on the MTD, and I want a probability that the MTD, uh, that it, its toxicity lies in the target band of at least 50%. And once we've done that, uh, we'll be happy. And that's it, we've now set up uh, enough uh, facts to be able to run some simulations. So let's say, to keep things quick, we just want 25 simulations for now of each scenario to give us a rough idea of how things uh, perform. It's saying, okay, at this point, we need to say where to save this. And off it goes running the simulations. We, we may have cut uh, some of that out from the video, so you didn't have to sit there and just watch the progress bar, but it's actually only been uh, a small number of seconds, certainly less than a minute, for FAGS to complete those 25 simulations uh, of each of the scenarios. And now we can get a quick look at how well our design is or isn't doing by looking at some plots, which summarize the results of these 25 simulations uh, at each scenario. So here you can see on the scenario MDD3, so we wanted to find the third dose, and the histogram shows the proportion of times each dose was, was selected as the MTD. And you can see we have a nice peak here, at, indeed, at the third dose. And similarly, if we look at the other scenarios, we see the same thing. We've got a, a reasonable peak at the intended target dose, and we see some, but not too much, selection of uh, the next dose up. Now, obviously, selecting higher doses is something uh, we, we don't want to do, uh, but if you remember the values that we specified in the virtual subject responses, our next doses typically had toxicity rates of certainly less than 40%, and so they're actually only just above the target of 30%. And given the small amount of data we ever collect in these phase one trials, uh, a certain amount of over estimation or over, over selection uh, by one dose interval has to be accepted. And there's the and there's the performance on the last scenario. Now one thing we other thing we should do is to look at how some of the individual simulations have performed so that we can check that you know we're comfortable with the way the our rules and our designers panned out. So here we can see 
the sequence of cohort allocations, each dot is a patient. If they're gray, they had no toxicity. If there's a red dot, uh, they observe toxicity. And here you can see the two patient run in. We reached the maximum the run in was allowed to carry on for, then the allocation of a full cohort, and then proceeding with a full cohort. Here it sees one toxicity. It's comfortable to escalate to the next dose, sees two toxicities, drops down, sees no toxicities, thinks maybe the next dose is okay, goes to the next highest dose, sees two more toxicities, drops down to the 2,000 milligram dose and says, well, I've got enough data here and I'm sufficiently confident that this is the right dose that is happy to finish. And we can check these out and play these through with the, the clinical team and say, you know, here are here's some potential trial records. If this actually, if this sequence of toxicities actually occurred in your trial, you know, are you happy with the escalation and the de-escalation decisions uh, that the design is making? In a full design, of course, we'd have many more scenarios to look at, and we'd be running quite a few more simulations in order to, in order to be fully confident about the simulation results. And one of the things we can see in this example is that when we compare the ability of the NCRM to make the right dose selection, um, it compares very well with the MTPI and 3 plus 3, and it does better across all the scenarios that we've, we've put in. I hope you enjoyed that demonstration. Uh, for more information and other videos, please visit the Berry Consultants website. Thank you for watching. Thank you.